So the ATF just changed their mind about pistol braces and now is arbitrarily going after a Q. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump this video, if you think that the ATF cannot arbitrarily decide what falls under the Second Amendment and what does not, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. So today we got some information released by Q and it's in regards to the ATF going after them specifically because the ATF is deeming the hunting badger as a SBR and therefore they are saying that Q can no longer manufacture it, sell it, and that they have to pretty much cease and desist. And so the letter that Q has released today is essentially to its customers saying that the ATF is going after us and saying that the honey badger that we sell and potentially some of our other products are considered SBRs and now we have to tell you guys that we are going to have to cease and desist manufacturing as well as give you some guidelines on what you can and cannot do with these types of firearms. Now, I know this might not impact a lot of us here in the state of California where we can't really get our hands on some of these items regardless, but what the ATF is doing does have some major implications because what they are doing is specifically uh, targeting pistol braces and they are specifically going after braces. And that is kind of what this seems to be all about. And so this does have major impacts, not just on Q, not just on um, any other person or any other person out in the state who has a pistol brace on a traditional air pistol, but this has major ramifications as well as for us here in the state of California, for those of you who might have a fixed magazine pistol build, maybe with a pistol brace on it, the way that the ATF is handling these types of things now is pretty much saying that if you have that pistol brace on that fixed magazine rifle, or if you have a pistol brace on any air or pistol, regardless of what it is, it is considered an SBR and you can be fined up to $10,000 or put into jail. And so I'll put links to all the letters that are associated with this issue, but I wanna start first with the letter that Q sent out to its customers. And so what it says is, Dear customers, on August 3rd, 2020, the Bureau of Alcohol and Tobacco Firearms and Explosive, ATF, issued um, Q a formal cease and desist letter notifying us that the ATS has taken the position that the Q Honey Badger pistol is a short bell rifle or SBR regulated under the National Firearms Act, so under the NFA. In response, Q has ceased all production of the Honey Badger pistol and submitted a comprehensive letter to the ATF and the Department of Justice, stating why we disagree with the classification Additionally, we have provided recommendations on how to address the firearms already in circulation. Q is seeking solutions that best protect you, the individual, and Q's distribution network from falling out of compliance with ATF regulations and federal law. At this time, Q has not received any definitive guidance from the ATF. So pretty much the ATF is just saying, you have to cease and desist. We are considering your product to be an SBR, and so you have to stop. In the meantime, Q encourages possessors of the Honey Badger pistol to take these protective measures until a resolution is reached between Q and the ATF. And so what they do in this letter is they provide anyone who has a Honey Badger some solutions of how they can become in compliance to what the ATF is now saying. And so let's take a look at the actual cease and desist letter that was sent to uh, the Q in regards to the Honey Badger. The ATF letter says, to who may concern, this is a reference to QLSC model Honey Badger pistol manufactured and marketed by your company. The Bureau of Alcohol and Tobacco Firearms and Explosives examined the firearm and has determined that the Honey Badger pistol is a firearm as defined by the NFA. Additionally, the ATF is aware that two similar firearms marketed by QLSC, the Sugar Weasel and the Minifix, uh, which may also be firearms as defined in the NFA. So they are saying not only do we have issues with the Honey Badger, but we have some issues with some other firearms that you are marketing. The NFA defines a firearm to include, in relevant part, a rifle having a barrel or barrels of less than 16 inches in length. A rifle is defined under Section 5845C uh, as a weapon designed or redesigned, made or remade, and intended to be fired from the shoulder and designed or redesigned and made or remade to use the energy of the explosive in a fixed cartridge to fire only a single projectile through a rifled bore for each single pull of the trigger and shall include any such weapon which may be readily restored to fire a fixed cartridge. And so this is the important part here that we all should be paying attention. The Honey Badger pistol is equipped with a proprietary pistol stabilizing brace Accessory made by SB Tactical. The firearm has an overall length of approximately 20 to 25 inches and a barrel length of approximately 7 inches. The objective design features of the Honey Badger firearm configured with the subject stabilizing brace indicate the firearm is designed and intended to be fired from the shoulder. Since this firearm also contains a rifled barrel, 
it meets the definition of a rifle. Further, since it has a barrel of less than 16 inches in length, the firearm also meets the definition of a short barreled rifle. So here, all of a sudden, they are doing this weird about face where they are saying that we are arbitrarily going to state without really any guidance that with a pistol brace on it, it is still considered to be intended to be shouldered. Where before this and before all of a sudden ATF decided to change their mind arbitrarily, we all were accepting that if you put a pistol brace on it, the intent of it is not to be shouldered. And it's really hard to prove the intent of a um, rifle or pistol to be shouldered. So it's really interesting that all of a sudden the ATF in this letter is saying that um, we can look at this and show that you have the intent to shoulder it. Now Q and their attorney sent a letter back to the ATF in response to the cease and desist order, essentially saying that what the ATF is doing is arbitrary. There's no real basis for their determination that this is an SBR rifle, but they are going to try to comply going forward. But they're also going to be contesting what the ATF is doing because administratively, they really haven't given us any guidelines about how you're supposed to determine something to be an SBR or, or how you're supposed to be determined what type of pistol braces you can put on it or, or when exactly that pistol brace is intended to be shouldered. There's not a whole lot of guidance from the ATF and essentially what they're doing is arbitrarily now deciding that they're going to go after pistol braces. So I know a lot of you here on this channel are in the state of California and I know I have a lot of viewers also outside of the state of California, but why does this have significance beyond just the ATF going after Q? And this has significance because what they are doing here to Q is specifically seem to be centered around pistol braces. And now it seems like the ATF is saying that if you put a pistol brace on any type of AR pistol, whether you're in California with a fixed mag AR pistol or in another state with a different type of AR pistol, they are now saying that those are SBR rifles. And one of the solutions that Q put out in their letter to people was to file a form one but like you're familiar, if you're in the state of California, we don't have that option. So it's very um, scary to think that the California Department of Justice can now take this new guidance by the ATF and run with it. We need to keep, be keeping an eye on this issue between Q and the ATF and further information that maybe the ATF will release or, or maybe if this develops into some sort of action against the ATF, we need to be keeping an eye on this because this could have major ramifications where people could end up getting enormous fines and also find themselves in jail, like here in the state of California for having a pistol brace, even on what they are attempting to be um, doing in a compliant fixed magazine build. And so like I mentioned, I'm gonna leave links down to all of these letters that were sent out. There's three of them. Um, one of them is the notice that Q sent out to its customers. One of them is the cease and desist letter from the ATF. And the other one is the letter sent out by Q and their attorneys back to the ATF saying what the ATF did was completely arbitrary and capricious. I also highly recommend you guys go over to their social media accounts and show them support. Um, I think Q is gonna have a long battle ahead of them. And the issue is that the ATF has pretty much disposable income, disposable attorney time, and they can really do whatever they want. It's very unfortunate. So if you have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer those to the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video and you like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is join the Patreon page and I'll go ahead and put a link down below to my Patreon page. Also just like, comment, subscribing and make sure you hit that notification bell because that helps the channel analytics, helps us spread the word about the second amendment and also helps spread the word and news about things like this which are happening in the US. So as always, thanks you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and never forget this nation was built by armed scholars and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.